Hello folks, uh, if you've been following international news, particularly um, in America, I think around the world, the, the major event that happened this weekend or this past weekend was the assassination attempt against Donald Trump, the former president and the presidential candidates in the United States of America. Now, it was particularly emotional for me for the reasons I'm going to say in this video. First of all, I had quite a hectic day. Um, I'm a sort of a very cautious person when it comes to making a purchase. This is not related to politics, that's just me. And I needed a car. We have had an addition to our family. And most of the time we are squeezing within a small car I have. And we can't have enough space for a pram. So I thought of buying a, a, a car, not a new car, but a bigger car. As I said, very nervous to spend such amount of money, and I don't want to take in any more any more debts. I've got too much already, so I try to negotiate when I buy heavy item. And during the negotiation, we have come to a point where the difference was five hundred dollars, New Zealand dollars. And I was trying to win that sort of negotiation battle, and. Uh, in the morning, I woke up and the lady sent me a message who was in the car saying, look, we trying really to sell this car so that we can pay our mortgage. Times are really hard for us. And and, and um, I feel so bad, you know, you, you kind of trying to benefit of somebody's misery. Because to be fair, the car was cheap already, but I thought ah, these guys are rich, you know, who could afford this big car and... We've got the stereotypes of people setting it up, being rich, you know, we human. But I felt so bad about trying to kind of squeeze another 500 of someone who's selling a family car just to pay mortgage. So I said, okay, um, we're going to come pick up your car and we're going to take a bus because uh, I'm the only one that drives in the family, but okay, we were going to take a bus. Then we drove quickly to the bus stop and lo and behold, we missed the first bus. Now, I'm the sort of person who likes to be on point, but also we had to go to church after that. So we missed that one. That means we're going to miss the first appointment and we're going to miss the church. The first appointment wasn't a big deal. I could give them a message saying we are, we are late and they were to wait because they live nearby. But the church was already forgotten. So, as if that was not enough, I tried to think of ways to pay. And when the bus came, I thought with the two cars, as a car's card payment, the bus uses a card, uh, um, I think they call it 80 hop cards, kind of the bus cards, anyway. And when we went there, one car didn't have enough, enough credit because I haven't used it for months or probably years. And the other card was working, but I had the cash and they didn't take cash. So there were three people, two adults, one kid, two cars and one cash. And they said, we don't take cash. I was like, oh man, what a day. But they don't say, ah, just jump on board. Anyway, we went there, everything went, went smooth and nothing happened to it. We went to the malls, had a bit of a... A drink and some uh, some sort of lunch, and we drove back home. And on our way home, I heard on the news I had the radio going that Donald Trump was shot. I'm like, what did they say? I'm trying to fiddle around the radio, which is a new because a new car, the buttons are different. And I switched the I tried to pump the volume up, but end up switching the um, the channels and I panicked a little bit, you know, but. It was so reminiscent of 1993 back home in Burundi. Uh, what happened there was uh, the country has been under military rule and one party rule for 30 years since the independence. But in 1993, this guy came from a civilian background and said, I want to be president and I want to be the first democratically elected president. And the people of the country said that we couldn't 
yeah, we, we, we're happy to see you. You're going to be our president. They voted for him. But the whole apparatus, the whole establishment, as they call it, the mainstream media, the army, the ruling party, everybody was against him except the people, we the people. And, and so there was always a fear that one day he's going to get shot during the campaign. He was being demonized, like uh, Trump is being demonized. The mainstream media, as we say, all sort of things against him. We didn't have even any history, political history to speak of. But they would kind of say, oh, he's rhetoric. But he wasn't even saying that. Oh, my, but his partisans or his members are saying this. Or when they say this, they mean that. Pretty much what they're doing to Donald Trump is it's very uh, surprising how many similarities there are between that campaign in a very small banana republic and uh, similar to what's happening in a very big um, democratic uh, country like the United States. But anyhow, the guy was elected, but the military didn't like him, so they killed him like three months after being elected and um, on the night when he was shot i woke up in the morning and a friend of mine in a dorm and i was in a boarding school told me look um, guy's been shot the radio is playing classic music we don't know what's going on we are doomed and sure we were um, from that day on, uh, hundreds of thousands of people died, a uh, war broke, and that's probably the reason I'm here. Uh, it was just a hell on in our country for the next 10 years from that day on. So it was a civil war. We have never seen that before. So that was pretty much a sort of a reminder of that dark day when that happened and i was like how come somebody in america think of doing this this is so stupid i was so distressed the the, the whole day i was uh, tuning into different youtube channel to try to understand uh, then i saw this video of donald trump being shot in the, on the ear and ducking down I'm like this is this is this looks like a movie star you know it's, this doesn't seem real and um, and 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 he stood up and said, where are my shoes? Where are my shoes? I'm like, jeez, man, this this is insane. And um, I got too emotional when he stood up and raised his hands, with the blood gushing off his ears and onto his face, and with the sort of bravado I haven't seen before. But that's also the sign our political leader was using back in 1993 of victory of. Of, uh, it's hard, but we're gonna face it. We can't afford to bow down. This is, uh, yeah. But man, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a, it was quite an emotional day uh, to say the least. I'm still am emotional, and I do hope that the United States are going to be the bearer of the torch of democracy they want us to believe they are and stop really demonizing Trump. It's just an obsessive stupid thing that these people are doing for a guy who just wants to be president. He just wants to be president like anybody else. I wouldn't mind being president. I wouldn't. But he's just a political figure. He was not even in politics. He just joined politics maybe for the fame of it or because he've got a heart for what he wants America to look like. But he's not the kind of person the mainstream media, the um, CNN, want us to believe. And that is feeding into the frenzy of people that think their life will be extinct if he was to be president. Yeah, uh, as I said, it's just an emotional thing. It just remind me of the, the, the stability of my country in, in the 90s and that killed a lot of people and it destroyed the country and uh, sent me to exile. Okay, that's what I have got to say. Um, have a good one, guys. If you've got any comments, please leave them down below. Cheers, bye.